everyone, it is Monday, and that means it's time for another draft video. We're doing Dominaria right now. And uh, yeah, this pack is a pretty good one. Um, I like both Academy Journey Mage and Blessed Light, and I need to change the size of this also. Glad I realized that before things went too far here. <laughs> um, so there we go. Um, yeah, so. I, like I said, I like Journey Mage and I like Blessed Light. I think I like Blessed Light a little more. Um, I do really love Mana Wars, you know that about me, but it turns out this format is slow enough that a five mana instant speed kill anything spells really good. In some formats it might not be, but this one it is. There's lots of bombs. If you can't kill them, you just lose. And Academy Journey Mage can't actually kill them, uh, but it can, you know, it can slow them down. I do like the Journey Mage, but I think it's Blessed Light over Journey Mage. The Familiar can be pretty nice, but it's, it's not... It's nothing special. And the first eruption is kind of bad. Um, yeah, so the red, both the red uh, sagas are kind of kind of garbage, sadly. Ooh, okay. So I like Haphazard Bombardment a lot. It has, it's another card that in a lot of formats wouldn't have been that good, but in this one, it's pretty good. Uh, it turns out this format's slow enough that getting a three for one over three turns is worth it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think I want that. Uh, I think it's pretty easily that. Um, the Yavimaya Sapherd, I always want to call a Shepherd and Blood Tallow Candle are probably next. Blink of an Eye sort of in there too. But yeah, we'll take the Bombardment here. So even though red-white is usually, you know, an aggressive color pair, it, you don't necessarily have to be. So, uh, you know, the first two cards we took aren't exactly aggressive ones, but uh, they are good ones. Um, Triumph of Gerard is kind of medium. Um, okay, so... Untamed Kabu is really good. The question is whether I should take it over cards that are not as good but are solid, like Keldon Raider or Call the Cavalry. They're both they're both perfectly fine, and they're not as good as Untamed Kabu, but I already have one white card, so I'm kind of leaning towards taking... And I have one red card, obviously. I'm kind of leaning towards taking one of these. The thing is, if we go green, we may be able to splash the other one of these without too much trouble. So... Maybe it is worth taking the Kabu here. I think I take the Kabu. Yeah, let's take the Kabu. I convinced myself. I mean, all we need is one Skittering Surveyor, and we can splash this or this. Um, and they're both fine on the splash. So, and mean if green's not open enough, then whatever. You know, this is worth it. I mean, a five mana five five with Vigilance and Trample is great. A uh, great finisher. Um, so, the red in here is not very good. I think I like Deathbloom Thal the most out of all the cards in this pack. Arcane Flight can be pretty swingy. Um, I think for us, probably the Trapper. Yeah. All three of our colors aren't looking great in this pack. <laughs> so, I think we take the Trapper, though. It's it's a good card. I mean, good, strong word. It's It's a solid card. 3 mana 3-2 three, that taps things down on occasion is pretty solid. Okay, uh, here I think we take Llanowar Envoy. It does help us splash, though not as well as uh, Grove from the Ashes or Skittering Surveyor. It do, it's a nice additional source to have. We could take the Intervention instead and just take another removal spell. Maybe I should just do that. It's not a great removal spell, but it's not a bad one. It's not as good as Blessed Light, but it's not considerably worse. It's just worse. Um... Hmm. I think I'll take the intervention. Let's take the more removal. I have always removal is good in every format, but in this one I feel like it's especially important. Okay, so the candle's nice, but I think I like the raider a little more, even though I already have a Davenant uh trapper. It also cuts red, so hopefully it stays open for us. It has been so far, I think. Uh yeah, so we'll take the raider. I think it's a good card. It's you know, 4 mana 4-3 four, that is good at all stages of the game because it lets you rummage is pretty nice. It's not looking like green's super open. I mean, we saw that Envoy, but it wasn't... It's not exactly a sign that I should be in green. I don't think. Okay, here do we take the candle? Maybe. Uh, Kaladin Overseer is not bad. Urza's Tome is good in some decks. Uh, probably the kind we're building, even though we're red-white. I think we're going to be sort of a slow deck, but maybe not. Uh, the Glider's fine, too. I mean, there's a bunch, there's like three cards in this pack that are kind of like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> 
The elephant's nice if you have multiple candles. It's worth noting, but I don't think we want to take it yet. So overseer or candle or glider. I think I'm going to go with the candle. Ooh. So Garner's good and all, but it's not super easy to splash in this color pair. I mean, we, you know, there is a good green card here, but I think Fiery Intervention is comparable to Mammoth Spider, and I'm happy to just take another one of those over Garna, too, who, if we could splash and we're sure we could splash her, I'd do it. You know, you can do some discard a creature with Kelden Raider and just get it back, things like that. Uh, giving all your guys haste is great. Um, ah, screw it, I'm going to take Garna. See if we can pick up the splash. It does look like black is pretty open, along with red. Although none of the red cards that are still here are especially good. This is a good sideboard card, so I may take it. Soul Salvage is the best card in this pack, I think. I guess we could consider being black red. I mean, what else are we going to take here? A mediocre combat trick, a bad can trip, a mediocre sideboard card, or a card that's so, such a build around it's hard to actually do anything with? Yeah, let's take Soul Salvage. Um... Yeah, Fire Elemental or Skirk Prospector. Both are pretty bad. <laughs> I guess I'll take the Elemental, though. Okay, well, here's an Elephant. I think I take it now over, like, Blessing of Bells and Lock. It does make it a little more likely we play white. Uh, Goblin War Chief, Tragic Poet. Uh, we don't have any auras right now, but maybe we end up with some. The War Chief is only good if you end up with a crazy number of goblins. That's pretty hard to attain in this format, although I've seen at least one person do it. I think I'll take the Poet, though. See if we pick up some more as well. Now I wish I'd taken the Goblin. Another Poet, another Warlord's Fury. Good stuff, good stuff. So, I mean, I think this pack went pretty well, mostly. Um, not sure for Black, Red, or Black, White. Um... Right now, I think the white is better than the red, but not by a lot, because Garn is pretty good. Um, you know, just giving all your creatures haste and being a 5-mana 3-3 flash is great, but adding on all this other stuff, even better. The Mending of Dominaria is quite good. Um, this is, again, a slow format, so a card that draws you two cards over two turns and then ramps you a little bit is pretty good. Um... So this is a strong pack between the Raph, Capuchin, Slimefoot. These are two of the best signposts and commons in the set. But I don't think either of them are things we want to take. I would cons I would probably first pick Raph if this were pack one, pick one, though. Just to illustrate how good he is. Um, I think he's better than Slimefoot. But, uh, yeah, I think we probably take Gideon's Reproach. It's not a great removal spell, but it's an okay one. And our red options here aren't good, and our black ones aren't that good either. Um, fungal Infection, Wind Grace Acolyte are fine, but I think Reproach is better than both of them. So that's what I will take. Okay, Whisper, huh? I don't think we want Whisper. I don't think we want another Candle just yet. Dark Bargain's not bad, but um, I think we probably just take, like, Keldon Overseer here. Yeah, and it's just not coming together with black. I mean, these cards are fine in black, but we're seeing better red stuff, and that's definitely the color we're playing, I feel like. Well, maybe it's not. I guess we have just as many white and red cards, especially when you get rid of this fire elemental. Okay, so another Gideon's Approach and Invoke the Divine, which is very main boardable in this format. I do love Cloud Reader Sphinx, but that's not where we are. Um, I think we take another white card here, whether it's another Reproach or an Invoke. I think it's probably another Reproach. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Um, okay, probably Avon Sentry. I like it more than Overseer or Journey Mage or... The bodyguard, they're all good though. I mean, the bodyguard and the sentry are both pretty good. Um, yeah, I think I take the sentry here. So we probably only run the elephant if we end up with like two or three candles or other artifacts that go to the graveyard, creature artifacts. Uh, but it's been pretty good. When you kick it, I mean, you get some serious value, and when you don't, it's not the worst stats ever, you know? So I wouldn't mind finding fixing to play Garna. Um, that would be nice to find, actually. Yeah, we definitely have incentive to play a few other artifacts slash historic cards with Keldon, uh, Davenant Rap Trapper, I mean. So, 
Yeah. Okay, Steel Leaf Champion and Bailoff Gorger. Don't think those are for us. Um, get to Chronicler can do pretty good stuff in our deck. I think maybe I take it over a third Gideon's Reproach because it can get back Gideon's Reproaches, Blessed Light, Fiery Intervention. That's all really good. Um, Pardic Wanderer is worth looking at, but I think, yeah, I think we take the Chronicler here. It's very rarely cast as a two drop, but I will put it here. I mean, Caligo Skin Witch is also nice, but I think Chronicler is just better. I think it's just better. Garn is not looking like she's going to make it here, but should we be a more aggressive deck? I don't know. I mean, Red White is supposed to be the aura deck, but there's not that many. There aren't enough payoffs, really, for it to. I mean, sometimes it does come together. Well, there's a Grow from the Ashes. But I think it's a I think it's a little too late to change uh, to green. We only have one other green playable card, um, and Bart Baird is really good. So and historic, so that's nice. I think he's better than the disciple and Easter Glider. He's just real good. Slows makes your opponent have to decide between curving out and um, attacking you basically, and making your opponent make that decision is nice. So would I rather have a nice little aggressive creature or another Chronicler in this deck? I think maybe I want the creature. Is that crazy? Maybe that's crazy. I think that's crazy. Let's take Chronicler. <laughs> I love that card too much to say no to it. Okay, here we probably take a Glider. I mean, Frenzied Rage, Excavation Elevant, Keldon Warcaller, Radiating Lightning. Those are all okay, but I think the Glider is better than all of them, given our current deck composition, I should say. Uh, sometimes Excavation Elephant would be better, and sometimes Frenzied Rage might be better, but I don't think we're there. Um, okay, we'll take a Bloodstone Goblin. We have a bit of Kicker going on, and he's a decent two-drop. So I don't mind picking him up this late. Wouldn't mind picking up fight fight with fire, you know, just and winning games off of get to chronicler and getting those back. That's that's the most fun I've had in this format so far. A few draft videos ago, one of the ones with horrible sound. Hopefully, I can break my my record of not doing so well without good sound because my record with bad sound is six and zero. Oh. And that means my record with good sound is 11 and 14. So <laughs> it's kind of funny. We'll take a candle here for sure. I'm happy with a late candle. And that probably makes the elephant make our deck. I don't think we want Guardians of Koilos, but I guess I take it over another fire elemental that I'm not going to play. Charge. Uh, sure. Why not? Arctic Wanderer, sure, why not, also. That makes the Elephant a little better, and it's perfectly playable. It's just not ex not great. It helps our Trapper out. That's really the only other payoff we have, though. We have the Elephant who likes artifacts, and the Trapper who likes all historic things. Um, so, yeah. Ooh, hello. Speaking of historic spells, okay. That is probably what we take. Um... You know, getting back Chroniclers. Oh, they go to the battlefield. Never mind. Yeah, you know, still value. <laughs> it's not great, though. Um, but yeah, I think we still take Teshar uh, here. We have enough historic things. We have one, two, three, four, five already. And, you know, that's already a decent enough to play Teshar. Um, and the other cards here aren't that good. I mean, Fiery Intervention number two wouldn't be too bad, but I think this has way more upside. It's also a flyer. We could use some more of those. Skizik. Sheevan Fire is probably what we take, though. Over Goblin Barrage, even, I think. We do have artifacts, but I think Sheevan Fire is just better than Goblin Barrage. Uh, Skizik's nice, too. There's three good red cards here, and a pretty good white card, but I think we take the Fire. I mean, there's something to be said for being able to dome our opponent for four and kill something, but Sheevan Fire is just so efficient that... I think it's what we take. Skizik's worth looking at because our deck doesn't really have great finishers just yet, but I think we'll get them. Um, another Glider or another Keldon Overseer or a Dub. Dub is pretty good. It is a little risky for sure, but it, you know, it's, it's not bad. Do I want the Glider or the Dub or the Overseer? Well... I guess we have more incentive to play historic cards now. Dub is the kind of aura, like, 
it's not bad. It's f perfectly fine, but I am just not a huge fan of going all in on these aura plans. I mean, it's so easy to get disrupted. Um, and I mean, the overseer is good, but I think I think more artifacts is where we want to go. And if we get see another excavation elephant, we might even play two in this deck. The way things are going. Um, well, this pack is completely devoid of anything we want. Uh, the best card in this pack is probably Rona. Um, I'm going to take a blink of an eye, I guess. It's probably the next best card in the pack. Okay, this is better. Um, I think we probably want Sanctum Spirit. We have lots of ways of making it indestructible in this deck. And that's nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think we get the Spirit over another dub. We're like red, white, historic, which I don't think is supposed to be a thing, <laughs> but that's what we're doing. So Skizik is, again, worth looking at. Um, having three drops and lower is something incentivized by Teshar, but we shouldn't let ourselves get too taken away by that. Um, Cyclops is nice. Disciple's not bad when, with the number of historic spells we have. What do we take here? There's just so many choices. Um... I'm not a huge Honor Guard fan. I think it comes between these three red cards, really. Um, and I think I like Helden Raider the most of, of them. I like Rummaging. Um, Skizik can hit harder, but not a lot harder. Just a little harder. Uh, no, I don't think we want a second Partic Wanderer, but I also don't really think we want a War Caller. So <laughs> where do we go here? Charge? I mean, maybe we do take another Wanderer. Probably goes in the sideboard. I don't like this really late Dauntless Bodyguard. Sure. He's pretty fun to keep getting back with uh, Teshar, too. <laughs> Just keep making things indestructible. Okay, so like I said, we may even want a second Elephant in this deck. We have a Orcish Vandals in this pack, too, but while we have five artifacts, that's probably not enough for the Elephant, either, actually. Maybe I want Radiating Lightning for the sideboard. I think I do, out of all those options. And... Lava Runner or Sparring Construct. I'm not going to play either of them. So, I mean, I don't think we play. We, we do have a lot of instants and sorceries, but I don't think we have quite enough. Shield of the Realms, Kirk Prospector. I guess I'll take the shield for sideboard. If all your opponent has is damage based removal, it can be a pain. Okay. So our plan is to try to win with flyers, basically, and play a bunch of removal. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think that's our plan. Yeah, we didn't ever really see any way to splash Garna. I guess I'll take a Healing Grace for the sideboard. It's good in the same time that Shield of the Realm is good, which is rare, but occasionally you go up against someone and all their removal is like Fiery Intervention and Wizard's Lightning and... It's like, well, I saw at least five removal spells that do damage, so Shield of the Realm, and I'd probably side in Shield of the Realm before I would seal it, uh, put in Healing Grace, but especially because our deck already likes historic spells, so we do have to cut one card. It might be the Goblin. It'll drop us to 15 creatures, but I think that's fine. I think the Elephant will be legit good in this deck. Uh, getting back candles or gliders or wanderers is pretty pretty good. Um, yeah, so we need to cut something. <laughs> what should it be? I think maybe it is Bloodstone Goblin. We have three cards with Kicker, four cards with Kicker. So occasionally it'll actually be a 3-3, three, three, but most of the time it's just going to be a 2-mana two 2-2. Two, two which is fine, but it, it's not relevant at all stages of the game. Most of our other creatures are either because they have evasion or an ability that taps something or an ability to rummage or whatever, or they're big, or they can get indestructible, you, you know, see where I'm going, or they can be kicked. And, uh, yeah, it's just not going to be... It'll be slightly better late, but not a lot better. It does take away... We only have um, seven creatures that can be brought back with Teshar Ancestors Apostle, but... I think that's probably plenty. Um, you know, that's almost half of our creatures. Uh, so that's, I think that's plenty. Uh, nine, eight. Um, 
Is that right? I'm not sure it is. We got two double reds and we only have one double white, um, but we do have more. Although we need double red to kick this and this, so they're sort of double red. Um, it's probably right. We have more cards we want to play in the early game that are white. Like, we don't really want to play Chroniclers in the early game. So yeah, that's probably right after I looked at it some more. All right, looks like a fun deck. I'll see you guys in the first match. All right, we're going into our first match. I think this hand's a keep. I mean, not having red mana is kind of annoying. I mean, white mana is kind of annoying, but it's okay. I mean, you know, it's not a perfect hand by any stretch, but it's fine. May actually play an early get to Chronicler depending on how aggressive our opponent is. Normally, I like to avoid casting it early if I can. Um, but if our opponent gets a really nice start, I may have to. They're not though, so not not any huge surprises there. This format is not one where you really desperately need two drops, and a lot of the two drops you don't play until turn six. Okay, It'd be nice to stop drawing white cards. That's for sure. I mean, unless I'm gonna draw planes, in which case, by all means, give me more white cards. Okay, um, all right. Well, guess I play my Overseer here. Attack for three. We can get it back later with Teshar, theoretically, if we have white mana ever. If it dies, too. I mean, it's not dead, obviously. Yeah, take two in the sky. Okay, that's obviously... <laughs> oh, God, really? That's obviously really good against our Overseer who can't attack through it. We're just going to go ahead and play our Candle here, even though we could get a trigger out of it later. But I think it's worth doing. Three in the sky here. Aha. How about that? Okay. Um Well, we can play a flyer who can block that, which I don't hate, but the question is whether it's better to like Gideon's Reproach and then kick get to Chronicler and get back Gideon's Reproach. I mean, I can do that later, I guess. So I guess I'll play Teshar here in, in the turn. I don't mind, like if I could find a way to trade Keldon Overseer for one of these, I'd probably do it because I can play Partic Wanderer and just get it back. But, um... There's not really any way for me to do that. Yeah, so you're going to be able to attack too. Great. I mean, I could double block, but that's not worth it. Yeah, we'll take we'll take seven to the face. Another white mana would be really nice. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I think I'm gonna play my Chronicler and just in the turn. Yeah, I think that's what I do. Um, and I'm planning on Gideon's Reproach and chumping the Excavation Elephant with Kid to Chronicler and hopefully taking it down. And I can get back to Chronicler. I mean, it'll just come into play, but I can still get it back if I play Partic Wanderer, which, you know, a six mana five five Trampler that puts a one three to token, vanilla token into play is not a bad deal. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, I think we still set up this chump, and if they use a trick, I can use Gideon's Reproach, so I'm just going to block here, too, and take the other two. Oh, they didn't use a trick, unfortunately. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, um... 
We'll reproach. Is it better to reproach one of these flyers? I don't know. I guess I'll do it to the elephant. Yeah, that makes me wish I'd played the bodyguard, but not having enough white mana has been a serious issue. Yeah, and they're continuing to build up in the sky, and we're just dead in the air. So, well, we can kill one of them with that blood tallow candle, but it hardly seems worth it at this point. Um, yeah, that, that didn't go very well. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's really anything we change. I mean... Healing Grace could be nice if our opponent has a bunch of damage based removal, but we only saw Gideon's Reproach, and that's not enough for me. Okay, we would like to play first. Okay, this hand is, I think, better than the last one, but it's another one where we keep it and we're like, uh, <laughs> we really need to draw some lands for it to work out. I mean, Trapper into Teshar is pretty nice. Um, okay, I don't think we bother playing the Chronicler right here. It's not going to make much of a difference. Okay, now it might be worth playing if we don't draw a land, and we did, though. So we're just going to play our Trapper. I wonder if they have Traxos or some other thing to abuse the Voltaic Servant. Um... That's usually the best reason to play it, is you have some silly combos. I mean, it's, you know, it's still historic, I guess. It has it has some utility. You can use your Urza's Tome twice in a turn. Or once on your turn, and once on your opponent's turn, anyway. So this time, I guess we should try harder to protect our, protect our uh, Teshar. I do think that's what we play here because it lets us get in for damage. So we'll play Teshar. Tap down their Trapper. Also gives us a Flyer, which is not irrelevant. Um, we do need to keep Gideon's Reproach in mind. And for that reason, I may not attack with Teshar much if my opponent has mana up anyway. Because uh, she can grind us out a win I mean, with all of our... Uh, historic cards, you know, we, we can trade this, get it back. Okay, well, they deep freezed it. So <laughs> everything I just said is irrelevant. Awesome. Poor Teshar. Never got to do your thing. Okay, there's our bombardment. Um, I think I play the Overseer here and just trade it. I'm happy. I mean, I'm not happy, but I'm fine with trading with either of those creatures. So we've got a reproach. Okay. Um question is, do I attack and just use Gideon's Reproach? They may use Gideon's Reproach as well, it's worth noting. Um, I think I go for it. Especially because we can get the Reproach back next turn, potentially. We also have Bombardment. Uh, so, if they just use the Reproach, I guess we can't use our Reproach. No, yeah, okay, they don't. Because they wouldn't have declared a block. Oh no, they're going to do it now. Yeah, okay. Fine. Still traded for something. <laughs> End our turn. So yeah, we can play Bombardment, but it doesn't seem super powerful right now. Um, just because our opponent has so few non-land permanents. And yeah, I mean, blowing up Memorial of the Glory could be nice, but... Interesting. Okay, Guardians of Koilos. And they attack for three. Um, yeah, we'll just do Gideon's Reproach here. 
So, yeah, I think we play a kicked Chronicler. Get back our reproach and end our turn. I think I'd probably just block him with my Teshar. I mean, the one downside that could come of that is they may have like Tragic Poet and get back their Deep Freeze, but. Academy Drake. It's probably worth playing Bombardment now, I guess. Maybe, maybe I just play my big guy. Yeah, maybe we do. Hmm. Yeah, we'll just play the big guy. And we even have mana if they syncopated there. Is he a golem? Yeah, he is. Not a construct. Not sure what exactly the differences are sometimes in magic. Yeah, we take two here. Ooh, hexproof. Ooh, this actually works on that. Interesting. Okay. Um. All right. We'll play the bombardment now. I think we have the time. So there, there, here, and here. So they have to... Yeah. Um, I'll just end the turn. Okay, we killed the Drake. If they do put an aura on this, it's going to get ugly. But um, I can also just try to... I can just block and not worry about a trick or a removal spell because my elephant can get something back while also being able to block cold water snapper so kicked academy drake and kill that with gideon's reproach so i'm not super concerned about it either Ooh, four five six seven. yeah so i think we play the bodyguard here we choose Partic wanderer um we got gideon's reproach in our hand so we can should we attack here it's still not a great attack, even with Reproach. I guess we can kill two of their creatures if they choose to block. Yeah, and there's a decent chance I kill one of these. I mean, 75%? No, 66% at the end step. Um, yeah, I think we go for it. There's a significant chance that they just take it, but... Yeah, they do. And I could play the elephant unkicked here, but I don't think it's worth it. Okay, we killed the snapper. That feels good. Now they can sack their memorial to glory and not lose anything else, But uh, which maybe that was a good reason to put it on a regular planes, but I think making them have to use their memorial at a certain point is better. So I think we definitely kill the flyer with our Gideon's Reproach. Not... Um, is this a golem? No, it's a construct. See? Who knows? All right. So, do this. And we'll take the other four. Okay, that's not fun. They're gonna kill my wanderer, and I can't make him. Making him indestructible doesn't matter. So, good news is I can get him back with our elephant. Other good news is we're gonna to get to blow up one of these permanents at their instep. So, I'm pretty happy about that. So we definitely attack with both our creatures here. Get in for three. Uh, it's all my mana, right? Seven. Yes. Get back the Wanderer. End our turn. And we blew up the land. I mean, I would have rather killed this, but blowing up the land doesn't hurt, certainly. I 
This card has really impressed. I mean, uh, I think I gave it a C plus in my set review. And I think it's better than that. I got a lot of, not a lot, but more than, I usually am wrong on 10%-ish. And I was wrong on more than that. <laughs> that video will be coming out relatively soon on uh, the mistakes I made, basically. Okay, so we can Chronicler, Kicked again. We can also play Easter Glider. We can also play Pardic Wanderer. Um... I kind of feel like just playing the big guy is probably the best move here. It puts more pressure on our opponent. I mean, I could just play the flyer. But that doesn't seem great. I think I just play the big guy here. I guess I can bluff charge if I leave up white, right? So, uh, yeah. So we'll just cast him. He's back. And lender turn. I mean, playing a flyer could put pressure on them, but we also know they have a ton of flyers, so I feel like a big guy is comparable to playing a flyer in most cases. I mean, they may have an out here. Um, yeah, there's their flyer. I mean, granted, mine can attack through it, and that doesn't hurt, but... So we're going to kick the Chronicler. Get back Gideon's Reproach. Which we can cast. The one card in their hand may be Syncopate, so that is something to keep in mind. So, uh, yeah, so I think we attack with our big guy, though, either way. Could be Gideon's Approach, too. Love this guy. <laughs> We're getting, I mean, these three creatures have gotten us, have been very good for us. You know, they're all very grindy and haphazard bombardment, obviously. It was a pretty good 3-for-1. I mean, the land we destroyed was basically two one one creatures. It would have turned into that in the late game anyway. Again, would have killed this instead if I had my own op choice. But, you know, I, for a second, I didn't think we were going to get to kill the land without it producing two mana. But they decided to kill my Wanderer. Mostly because they knew I didn't have Excavation Elephant. If they knew I had it, I don't think they would have done it. They would have just made the two one ones and said that was, you know, worth it to keep this alive for sure. And get two one one tokens, so they would have come out ahead. But I guess I wouldn't have had to recast Partic Wanderer. But it does kind of suck, like letting your opponent know you have this. But in later stages of the game, it's sort of like does it matter if they know? I mean, it's something they should suspect anyway. Uh, in this format, okay. So they're just going to take five. I am happy with that. Now we're getting into the range where playing the glider is more worth it. I think. If we can get rid of this Guardian, we can actually attack with all three of these uh, fairly well. Anyway. Okay, so we'll take three if that's what they want to do. All right. Double Easter Glider. That That is lethal for our opponent. Okay, so attack with Wanderer again. They may go for a block here that gains them life, I guess. Although, if they did that... I was going to say, if they only block with one, Gideon's Reproach makes it so I do lethal. Okay, so I think we use the Reproach on the Guardians. Yeah, because then my creature can't die unless they use another card. So, we'll do this. See what they have. Uh, okay, so we will trample over for three, but they gain three, so they stay at four. And our guy doesn't die. That's pretty important. But I think now... Well, we can't. We, yeah, we just cast both of these. Maybe we just cast one. I, I guess we don't need to go all the way wide with the board we have. I think it's probably worth casting all of them. There aren't that many things that can hurt me. They're going to play Urza's Ruinous Blast right now. Of course, that wouldn't help them a whole lot either. But... <laughs> You know, it would definitely hurt me more than it hurts them. They still have three cards in their hand. All right, we got there in game two. Got to play our kicker graveyard creatures who give me tons of value. Guardians of Coilos. Um, 
I guess it's sort of good in a deck with Teshar and Davenant Trapper. Two pretty good heroic... Uh, heroic. Uh, what is it called? Historic. Historic triggers. Um, but I still think... I mean, I'd rather have, like, big Pardic Wanderer, I think, in most cases. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we can do that again. All right, this is another solid hand. Um, yeah, maybe we get to do some stuff with Teshar finally. Maybe. That'd be nice. Um, is it worth playing our candle now when we have these in our hand? That is a good question. I don't actually think it is. Um, I can wait to play it. Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, we'll see what our opponent does, but I don't think it's worth it because we have two really good historic triggers in our hand. Um, we did get another red, which is nice. So we can play our Trapper next turn and then Teshar, theoretically. I'm sure getting frozen is a real possibility for Teshar, but... Okay. Now we find out what happens. Hey, Sanctum Spirit. That's another reason not to play it right away. So we'll play our Trapper here. We haven't seen Syncopate, but I feel... No? I always, I'm always worried about that card in this format, and it ha does, as I'm sure all of you who've played this format, it does uh, crush your soul sometimes. Okay. Frozen. That's cool. Um, I think I actually want to play Teshar here. Yeah, we'll play Teshar, see if they have an answer for that, too. Um, we do have Elephant plus Candle, which is great, but we also have Sanctum Spirit, so that is... It's worth keeping this in our hand for now. If we're going to play it, next turn's not a bad time to do it. Nice thing is we can block with this, and it goes to our graveyard, and then we can get it back and play without Deep Freeze, so that's kind of obnoxious for our opponent. There's their trapper. Yeah. Well, maybe I should have held on to that land, huh? I mean, I think I'm gonna discard the glider since I can just get it back into play once I play Blood Towel Candle. Yeah, that's a good deal right there. Good deal. All right, so we're gonna play Keldon Raider here, discard Easter Glider. Yes. Goodbye. And then, come back. Pretty sweet right there. Um, now we don't have anything to discard his Sanctum Spirit, but I think getting basically a free creature in play was probably worth it. Oh, I didn't attack. I am a little worried about Gideon's approach, so I don't, I'm not too upset that I didn't attack. Um, especially because, again, this can really uh, win us a game if it's allowed to stay in play. And I have other creatures who are more disposable. <laughs> Ooh, Time of Ice, that's obnoxious. Okay. So what do you tap, Teshar? I know you don't want to get rid of the glider because, oh, you're gonna tap that. Why? Oh, so you can get Deep Freeze back. I feel you, That's that's a good idea. Okay, we'll take the three. We can swing back for four, so that's nice. Um, another land. So yeah, we'll attack for four here. We do get to use this trigger again. Um, do I play this land? Yeah, I think we do. We need six. And maybe even seven to be happy. Um, we'll play the spirit here. Oh, they chose not to tap it? Yeah, they chose not. I don't know where I th why I thought they were tapping it. Yep. 
Sounds good for you anyway. So yeah, I mean, we're in a situation where it's like, do is it worth attacking with our glider? Maybe. Maybe. I mean, we get in for two, but it'll get bounced along with these. Where are instants and sorceries for our chronicler? That's what we really need. Okay. Well, okay. Um, yeah, I don't think we bother playing it. I think we just pass our turn and leave up Blood Tallow Candle and don't attack with our glider. These are both going to get bounced, so. Which again does mean we get to use this again. If I can discard, I mean, I can discard a Chronicler and then play an artifact, but that's not that's not as sweet as Easter Glider. I'm hoping they don't have a way to tap down more of my creatures. That's, that's always fun. Uh, yeah, we'll end our turn. We can always get back our candle, which is nice. Uh, we just need one more mana to do it. So maybe it's not Gideon's Approach or Blessed Light or something, but... Ooh. That's the first time I've actually seen this used effectively in this format, and it is going to be nasty. So they get to put that back into play, tap one of my creatures, then tap another one of my creatures. Although, actually, it canceled these, so it doesn't actually... Because it's two separate instances, yeah. So these will untap now. He doesn't actually get to tap. He gets more tempo, I guess, because he can do it a couple more times. But he has to retap them, basically. So, yeah. All right. So it wasn't isn't actually that scary with the Sentinel. It's better with like um some of the other um sagas, but I mean it's still good here. It's just not like incredible or anything. It does make it so I have a harder time attacking them for longer, basically. So for what that's worth. Okay, so we'll block this. I think we just take the three. I think at the end of their turn, I probably just fire off Blood Towel Candle to kill something. Yeah, so you tap that, but it's gonna untap. So. I think we we'll probably wanna kill the art, the trapper the most. Yeah. Get out of here. So if we hit a land, we can just get it back. Oh, we got Gideon's Reproach, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, so I think we end our turn. Now, I think they actually will get bounced. And we can keep up Gideon's Reproach. We have a 0-4 blocking. We're, you know, they're slowing us down, but I'm not too worried. So these get bounced. Which does, again, mean I get to discard something later and draw rummage, as they call it. Yeah. So, yeah. Not much pressure on us, and that's nice. Um... I guess they're probably gonna attack with their 3-3 and, and their 1-3, interesting. Well, I'm definitely not blocking the 1-3, but I will block your 3-3. Go to 13. That freaking guy's back. Okay, good old hex proof. Okay, Partic Wanderer is nice. I wish I could get something back with it, but it's a little greedy, right? Um. So I attack with my glider. Drop them to 14. And I think we just slam the Wanderer as we have before. And it can block the Cold Water Sentry at least. Cold Water Sentry. Cold Water Snapper. Is there a card called Cold Water Sentry? <laughs> I don't know where that came from. I mean, being able to cast Reproach would be nice, obviously. 
But yeah, I mean, if he attacks with this turtle and it doesn't have an aura on it, I definitely just block it with my trapper and then play a historic spell later to get it back, which could be the blood tallow candle since we can get it back. Okay, they're gonna attack with everything, which is interesting. So we definitely block here and we definitely block here. If they have a trick or something, I'm not too worried about it. Gideon's Reproach. So we do two for one of them and we can get that Wanderer back later. And we can also get back our Trapper. So that is a reasonable deal for us, I think. Yeah, I mean, this thing is a problem, don't get me wrong, but if we can keep getting back our guys, it's less of a problem. Okay, Bloodstone Goblin. So, we're definitely going to attack with our glider, who can't block or do anything useful, really. So we attack for two. Then I think we play Keldon Raider and probably discard Bloodstone Goblin, I think. Of course, we can play the Goblin. Maybe we just want to discard a Chronicler. What do we want to discard? Uh, yeah, I think we discard the Goblin. I might play an unkicked Chronicler here, depending on what we draw. Um, okay. So, is it really worth playing an Unkick Chronicler? It doesn't really feel like it's worth it. No, I don't think it is. I mean, I can try to double block this and kill it. I guess that's worth it. I convinced myself. Unkick Chronicler it is. Because we can't use Reproach to kill it. We do have Haphazard Bombardment. That's like our only way to kill it in our whole deck other than combat. And if we get two for one here, it's not the end of the world. But yeah, so I think we go for it. Um, doesn't look like we're even getting two for ones. So just one for one. Granted, it was one of our better creatures, but I'm not super concerned about it being dead. Oh, that's why they were willing to do that. Okay. Because <laughs> they have more. So the question is, is it better to get back Blood Tallow Candle and immediately get back the Trapper? Talking about using my Elephant. Oh, well, now we don't have to think about it. Um, yeah, I think we play our Candle here. And we get back the Trapper. Okay. And... They are, they, they don't have um, mana for Gideon's Approach, so I think Teshar is going to join the, par the party this time. Attack for four. So then we play Sanctum Spirit, and we leave up mana for Gideon's Approach, although we don't really have a good target to use it on, if we're being honest. Um, and we'll end our turn. I feel like we can just chump block this thing with get to Chronicler here and not really worry about trying to kill it. Oh yeah, that, that's what we need to kill. We can kill that with a Reproach. They also have a Flyer now, which is obnoxious, but we can, again, kill it with Reproach, get Reproach back, etc. cetera. Um, my silly red-white good stuff deck. Okay. So again, they're tapped out. Um, uh, four, five, six, seven. So we have eight mana available. We can actually Blood Tallow Candle and Gideon's Reproach with eight mana. Um, we could also play Excavation Elven and get back another Blood Tallow Candle to tap this down. And also, yeah, I think that's probably the best thing. I think that's our best choice. So we get back. We're going to cast our elephant. Uh, get back the candle. Play the candle. Tap the big flyer. 
Get back Bloodstone Goblin. <laughs> Man, this is a good time, isn't it? And we attack for four here. Guess we could have held on to it, but no, it's definitely better to just go for it here. So we drop them to four. And we have two removal spells in play, basically. And yeah, we take four to the face, but I'm not particularly concerned about it. Yeah, they decided not to do it. So <laughs> they have to hope we don't have another historic card, and we don't. But we can use Gideon's Approach to or Blood Towel Candle to kill the Drake and attack for lethal. I think that's what we try. Okay. And do we just attack with everything now? I think we do. Yeah. All right, we got there. That first game was ugly, but in our second two games, we did a lot of what I love doing in this format, which is playing kicked things that draw me extra cards, basically. See you guys in the next one. All right, match two, we would like to play first. Another solid hand. Yeah, we haven't had great hands, but we haven't had a mulligan either, so it's sort of worked out. Um, we haven't seen Blessed Light yet. And yeah, having a five and a six in your opening hand isn't exactly what you want, but we do have early removal if we need it, and we have Trapper to play on turn three. And we're on the play, so that's perfectly fine. There is something to be said for being on the draw in this format in a particularly controlling deck, but I don't think we're quite there. Um... Don't think we are. Could be wrong. Okay, slow start from green white is nice. Um, okay, so we play our trapper here. Don't have anything else to play for a while. Ugh. <laughs> we can reproach her, and I think we probably attack and try to get that working oh no i think we still want to do it because if they start putting auras on her things get ridiculous if they just take it then yeah we just play bared and that's fine granted we do have blessed light in our hand too so that's worth thinking about there's a good chance they just take it because they're going to know there's like a million different ways i can kill that thing roughly roughly a million combat tricks would do it gideon's approach would do it yeah they just take it so now we just play bared We could have tapped it down is what's funny, but <laughs> you know, we didn't need, we didn't want to. We were trying to get them to block to begin with. So it does mean we sort of miss out on a trigger, but let's see if they slap an aura on that thing and go to town. Okay, you gotta pay one to attack. I think we just take it. Um, there's roughly a million ways my bear dies too, so. Okay. Um, I think we attack again with both. Yeah, I think that seems good. We can use Reproach if we need to, and if not, we'll just play Kelden Raider in our second main phase. I'm not sure we actually want to discard anything, though, which isn't usually the case, but I think it is here. So, like, if they double block Baird, um, obviously Reproach is really good. Yeah, and I'm fine with that trade. Sure. Do we discard anything? I mean, maybe the Elephant? I hate to do it, but... I am seriously considering it. Um, yeah, I think we're discarding our elephant. And we hit the land we needed for Blessed Light, and we're one away from Bombardment, too. So that's part of the reason I was willing to do that, is we may not need an Excavation Elephant in this game. I'm hoping we don't. And I didn't want to discard any of our removal, so... <laughs> Came down to the elephant, unfortunately. Mammoth Spider. Sure. 
Do I want to cast Bombardment yet if I draw a card? I don't think so. Okay, well, we're going to be able to cast this and then maybe this next turn to get it back. That seems pretty good. I think we just uh, Blessed Light this spider and attack with both our creatures. Crack in for six. End our turn. Yeah, they're going to choose to attack. Um, and it's not really worth blocking. They do go up to 13. We go down to 16. But this is still a race we win. Especially with the help of Bombardment, Get to Chronicler, and Gideon's Reproach. Okay, so we can get it back. Um, all right, I think we attack with both again. If they like double block the raider, we can use Gideon's Approach to kill one of them. And if they don't block at all, we just cast a kick to get to Chronicler and get back Blessed Light. Chronicler can humorously enough block Knight of Grace all day long. Okay, all right. So I think we Gideon's Approach one of those. Um, yeah. They may have their own reproach. They do. So they don't lose both their creatures, but we do kill the better one of the two, and we still get in for four. Which I'm cool with. So, yeah, I don't think we want to play our Chronicler right now. We'll just end our turn there. They have a lot of mana over there. I'm not super excited about that fact. Alright, they attack me for two. Pegasus Courser, that's not going to be very fun. They play another creature here. I probably cast Bombardment. They don't, though. So, all right, let's attack with our Raider. See if they have another Reproach waiting. So the question is, is it actually better to get Blessed Light right now? Looks like they do. Yeah. And, or is it better to get Gideon's Reproach? Because, four, five, six, seven, uh, I think it's probably better to get Blessed Light. Yeah, if I could cast Reproach this turn, I would think about it. I guess if I draw one more land, I can cast Reproach and play Bombardment in the same turn. I mean, either way, we're kicking it, so let's just cast it and figure it out later. So we'll cast this Chronicler. Um... I guess I'll get the light. I mean, it is more powerful, but it is way clunkier too. But if they play something really scary, Gideon's Approach won't be able to deal with it. So they can crack me for three in the sky here. I think we probably just play Bombardment now. I mean, it does suck when you have to put it on lands because blowing up lands, especially this late, is pretty irrelevant. And I'd like to at least put three on real things instead of fake things um so okay well that's interesting four five six seven okay uh three four five six so i can attack for six if i kick this that seems pretty good drops them to three overseer is lethal i could wait but I think casting Overseer is pretty good here. So, and we'll take the Knight because it hits harder. And we'll attack for six.
And they're in a place where blessed light can just end them, basically, more or less. Okay, they got something. I'm not going to be happy about it, I don't think. I do have blessed light. Ooh, I'm not happy about that. <laughs> That's always annoying. Okay. It's not the end of the world, obviously, but it is... It is a problem. Kind of have to kill this courser. If I kill the courser, these, this board isn't threatening at all. So I may just cast a Blessed Light on it. Oh, uh, yeah. Just, just get out of here. Two creatures we can block. Um, we can trade with one and block the other, so... Yeah, no attacks. I like that. Okay. Um... I think I discard our friend the goblin again. Okay, candle's not bad here. Uh, yeah, we'll play it. We don't have any way to abuse it, but you don't have to abuse it. It's just good. And this guy can attack his next turn, so if he's still alive. Kind of have bombard, haphazard bombardment in my back pocket if things get a little dicey. Um, this Sheevan Fire is pretty good here. So, I think we attack with both of these. And just let them block however they're going to block and then figure out what I want to do. Although, yeah, no, yeah, well, I think we let it happen. So we're just going to cast an unkicked Sheevan Fire here. The reason I don't want to kick it is because I can still leave up the candle if I don't. And it kills it as is. I mean, they could have a trick or some such thing. Yeah, so the question here is, do I just fire off the candle? And I think I, think I do. We do have several ways of getting the, well, I guess not several. I guess we have one way of getting the candle back. But we have a way of getting back that Sheevan Fire. We drop them to nine here. Still have a good blocker. Still have Haphazard Bombardment uh, for when that matters. Yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, I guess it's Bombardment time. Another candle. Uh, okay. So, yeah, I think actually I still just cast Bombardment here and in my turn. So they have two of every color at least, I guess, and we haven't, I think they're just splashing blue, so I don't know how useful blowing up an island is, but we'll go for it anyway. We'll end our turn. Okay, we killed the druid. I don't mind that. That thing is really annoying if your opponent has soul salvage. I mean, it's not quite as scary as get to chronicle over soul salvage, but it's pretty scary. Ooh, too bad we used all those blood towel candles, huh? Um, but yeah, we still cast her. See if they have counter spell. Nope. So we'll just end our turn. Pull up one of these, please. Okay, Sapperling. Don't hate it. All right, we're in great shape now. There's a decent chance there's something like Gideon's Reproach, but like, I'm not very worried about that. Uh, four seven. I mean, I could try to go for Lethal here. I mean, I am gonna attack with everything, but I don't think. Trying to go for lethal here is right when they have so much mana untapped. You know what I mean? I mean, it just doesn't seem worth it. I mean, you know, if it worked out for me, it would be great, but we have no way of knowing if it would. Okay. 
So they can use a trick, but I think we just use candle again if they do, yeah. Drops them to three. Oh God, what are they doing? Can they find a way to not die? It would be hard to do, I think. I guess another kicked, ooh. Okay, I don't think that'll be enough. I mean, they can return their guy who can gain them a million life, but he won't do it for a turn anyway. Let's see what they're doing. Danitha Capuchin. Okay, that that's obnoxious. I still don't think you survive though. Uh, you block this. Actually, I guess you block this, which will put you up to five, but then you take lethal. Yeah. Okay. All right. That Mending of Dominaria would have been a lot scarier if they had just a little bit more life, so I'm glad they didn't. Um, I'm glad they didn't. Yeah, we don't have much of a sideboard. Not having a way to blow up enchantments and artifacts is not usually something that feels good in this um, format, where even just playing one main board is usually worth it. I forgot I have a fiery intervention. <laughs> that should be in my deck for sure. I think it was. I don't know what happened there. What did I put in my deck instead? Was it the Wanderer? This intervention should definitely be in my deck. I just noticed that. <laughs> That's bad. I swear it was in my deck, though. You guys tell me. Uh, it's like my deck changed itself. I could be wrong. But I know there's no reason I wouldn't play this. But I don't know what I wasn't running. Maybe blood. I think it was probably Bloodstone Goblin, which you know we've been just discarding him left and right, so that makes sense. I think I think we saw the Wanderer because of all of our heroic crap. But yeah, I need to fix that after this so that it's in game one, my game one deck next time. It's another clunky spell, but it's a good one. Yeah, I think this is a keep. I think this. If we're not on the play, is it worth playing Dauntless Bodyguard on turn one? I think it might be. Well. Now we'll find out. We'll get a little bit of information anyway. Just a little forest. Okay. Well, none that helps us. Uh, yeah, I think I'll play him on turn one. You know, getting the indestructible effect is nice, but... So is attacking for two or four early. Oh, we're not going to get two, are we? Well, I'm happy to trade for that. Let's attack. Do we play an untapped Chronicler? I mean, an unkicked Chronicler? I think we might. Yeah, I think we do. Seems pretty reasonable here. It can hold down the ground for us for a while, and we still have two other creatures who can help us out later. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> okay. Freaking spork round, Thalid. And our turn. Don't play another one. That would be very scary. Our Teshar can eventually get these back, so I don't think trading them is as risky as it often is. Uh, mm, yeah, I think I'll just declare block here. Maybe double blocking with those would have been better, but especially because I have Teshar in my hand, but there's not going to be good attacks for us anyway. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I will cast Teshar. In my turn. Come on, other historic cards. Where are you at? I'm going to draw Baird now that I said that, even though I can't cast him.
Bring in the thunder. Give that flying. Yeah, I think we just take this to the face. Ugh. Danitha Capuchin's in there again, but I bet they get the sap herd given their spore crown thalids in play. Yeah, they did, as expected. Okay, that's nice. Um, so I think we go glider, get back trapper. For free, that's pretty good, right? And I think we just attack with our Dauntless Bodyguard. I mean, it's not like he can do anything anyway, other than attack. They could block and get it, get their guy back, sort of like what what we did. But uh, now, what do they mill? Another sapper. Great. That's just great. I really need to kill that Thalid. There are lots of ways to do it in our deck. We need to draw one of them. We can sort of race with them right now, but... Wait, they didn't get back their sapper? Danitha Capuchin's what they got back. That's interesting. They may have a scary aura. Because not getting back the sapper there feels pretty strange. Uh, yeah, so we'll take three. Question is whether I should be attacking with my Teshar. I'm, or blocking. Probably not. I guess Danitha, no, she can't attack through the Chronicler, so. Yeah, another one of those is so much fun for us. So happy. Yeah, not having um, things to get back with these feels pretty bad. Um. Kind of have to play my elephant. I think I do. Uh, it can block well, so, and I think we do attack with both of these here, and we play our elephant. Don't get to do anything sweet with it, but a three-five body goes a long way towards helping us right now. A lot more than a one-three would. They didn't have any lands in there, so that's nice, I guess. They didn't ramp at all. Still really surprised it got Danitha. If there's like an on Sarah's wings or something, then it'll make sense. But if there's not, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I guess in conjunction with that, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Not bad. And it will outrace us. Come on, removal. And then get to Chronicler, more removal. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, well, we end our turn as we slowly die to, I'm holding on to this in case I draw my Raider guy, the Rummager. And the only reason we need seven ever is for excavation elephants, so yeah. All right, so do I block? Uh, I think taking one is worth it. If you go back up to 16. Corrosive ooze, yeah, yeah. Are you just going wide enough to kill me now? Probably. Ouch. All right, well, we got to play the Chronicler now. End our turn. I think we lose game two here. Still have game three at least. 
Yeah, I mean, this is an interesting game because our opponent didn't use any removal and neither... Uh, we used a little, didn't we? No. No, we didn't. We just traded. Neither of us have cast a single removal spell. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Okay. Who are you giving fly, flying to? I think I'm going to triple block the Mammoth Spider, or try to anyway. I think that doesn't hurt. So, uh, yeah, so block, block, block. You can only kill one of them, so. And we can get that one back should we ever draw another historic spell. We do go to five, though. May have a trick, may have removal. I mean, it doesn't really... Our chances of winning will certainly go down if they do that, but they're already pretty low. <laughs> so... All right. Dead spider. Good, another flyer. That's what I wanted to see. That is also what I wanted to see. <laughs> All right. Game three. <sighs> Maybe we don't want fiery intervention. <laughs> no, we do. I mean, we would have been happy to draw it there. It doesn't feel great to kill a Pegasus, what you call it, with it, but hey. It would have made it would have made a big difference. So we would like to play first. All right, this hand's alright. The Raider makes it a little better than it looks because we can pitch one of these extra lands for another card. I think we probably want to play Chronicler on turn two against this guy. Yeah. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I'll pass. <laughs> of course, last game we never drew a single instant or sorcery and that hurt with our Chroniclers, but... Player Glider turn three, Kelden Raider turn four. That's pretty good. Pretty good start for this format. Hey, something to get back. So yeah, we'll play this Plains and pitch this Mountain next turn with our Kelden Raider. That's the plan anyway. Spore Crown Thalad was a real all-star in that last game. We just couldn't kill it ever, and it got really out of control with all of its friends. Ooh, that's good, too. We are drawing better this game. That's always nice. So we will attack for two. Obviously, this can't block. So it is all about turning sideways when it can. Yeah, I'll play this Plains. I mean, losing the fifth land could be a little risky, but we're going to draw a fifth land. I mean... I think we still discard it. See, there it is. And we got a little deeper in our deck, and we still got our fifth land for our Blessed Light this time, which will be nice, I think. Especially because we can get it back. We also have the Bombardment if things get real crazy. And they may. I mean, they're already getting pretty crazy. Spore Crown Thalad is going to make me want to die. Okay, we got a fifth and a sixth land. So I think we just leave man up for Blessed Light and we attack with our glider. The plan is to block the 2-2, two, two, uh, one of the 2-2s, two, and then just take the other four. If they use a trick or something, then I fire off Blessed Light. If they play Spore Crown Thalad, I declare the block and then kill the Thalad, etc. That's That's my plan, I think. I mean, if I go Blessed Light, get to Chronicle, get back Blessed Light, that's going to feel pretty good. Granted, our opponent does have really low-to-the-ground threats that Blessed Light doesn't feel great against, but, you know, those low-to-the-ground threats can be pretty scary. Ooh, well, I think our target just changed <laughs> to Territorial Allosaurus. Just glad they didn't kick it. Get out of here. 
Ooh. So, kicked Chronicler or Baird? I don't know. I need to attack with this Easter Glider, though. Let's think about it. Um, I think Kick Chronicler is probably better. Granted, I guess one could say this is going to be in my graveyard for a while. I could get it back later. Nah, I still think I want to kick it while I have the time to. Like, if our opponent puts too much pressure on us, it just may not be something we can do. Also happens to block well right now. They know we have it now, too, but that's it's not a big deal. Ooh, gross. Gross, gross, gross. Gross. Is it haphazard bombardment time? Maybe. Maybe it is. So if he attacked here, I think I would just Brock a Sapperling and take five, but they didn't, so. Hello. Um, all right, well, we attack with Easter Glider yet again. I think it's probably better to play Baird and the Candle here than to play Haphazard Bombardment. Baird's an excellent blocker. He slows down their attacks. Yeah, so Haphazard Bombardment is there if we need to try to grind out a win and uh, so forth, but. I don't really feel like using it yet because we're not under a lot of pressure. I mean, at this rate, Easter Glider is just going to kill him. We have two removal spells, basically, between the candle and the light. Oh, God. If they ever play one of those Thalids, it is going to be ugly. Good news is, like, going wide is punished a little bit by Baird, at least. They're about to play that Thalid. I know it. feel it. No, just an Envoy. Okay. I mean, they are going really wide, but again, Baird says, well, do you want to build up your board? or attack. Right now they're building up their board, obviously enough. I think now we play Bombardment. Yeah, I think we do. Um, all right, so let's attack for a big two more damage in the air. Yeah, they've gone wide enough that playing Bombardment and thinning out their board is definitely worth it. I mean, we're not blowing up anything great, but we're still getting a three for a while, sort of. The sap herds aren't exactly three for ones. Um, I guess technically now that they're here, uh, Corrosive Ooze is strictly better, but we don't have a way of... I, I'll go after it. Uh, no, it shouldn't because of the Thalid thing. So we should go after the sap herds. Um, if our opponent didn't have a Thalid Lord, it would be different, but they do. So <laughs> we're going after these guys. Goodbye, Sap Herd. So we have Keldon Overseer for like a surprise steal your big guy if they play one. Or, you know, we can obviously kill big guys too, so. All right. Um... I'm just gonna chump one of them, not chump, uh, block, I guess. It's a technical term, because <laughs> I'm not gonna, my creature's not gonna die. So yeah, we'll take five, block. Hello, okay. Um, yeah, so we attack for two more in the air. We could attack with Baird. No, nah, it doesn't seem worth it. No, nah, we'll just get in for the two in the air. Leave up stuff, mana for candle, reproach, blessed light, etc. Okay, Sappard is gone. Another one, anyway. I think I just do the same thing I did last time, which is take... I mean, because getting to blow these up for free is worth taking three damage for, you know? They're also having to pay mana just to attack with them, so there's additional value there. So, block.
Okay. Um, I. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I'll just use my candle here. Alright, and again, we attack with our glider, who I think has done literally all the damage to our opponent in this game. They don't have their spider. Of course, if they did, we could kill it, so there's that. Um, we'll attack for two. I think we still don't play anything. Uh, yeah, we just don't play anything. We kill one of these. We killed the bigger one, so I'm fairly happy about that. Now we can block a lot more forcefully. Oh god. Gain 10 life? Don't gain 10 life. You don't need to do that. They gain 10 life. <laughs> well, that's okay. I mean, their board is not really scary or anything. We could use one of our other evasive threats. But, you know, apparently this can just do it all on its own. Okay, so we attack with the glider again. I think we play our Raider here, and maybe we discard our Overseer. It doesn't feel like it's going to make a major impact on this game. We have two removal spells in our hand, so... And we can get it back with Teshar, potentially, too. So that is a little bit of value worth keeping in mind. So I think we hold on to the two removal spells and discard our Overseer. Get another land and end our turn. Not that we really need them. Four or five. Yeah, we don't really need to play any more lands. Okay, well, that is, of course, going to die. But <laughs> it can block our Easter Glider, and it makes their board a lot scarier. So, for those reasons. Yeah, so we're going to attack with our Glider again. I don't want to use Blessed Light on it. That is some overkill. They may actually just take it. I can still kill it, obviously, enough. Now they're gonna they're gonna block. So we're gonna reproach. Do they have a trick? They do, I think. Wow, we have to fire off Blessed Light too. Can't really let this survive. Their hand's empty now too, so we know that. Um, Gave them a way to kill us, and that is a problem. All right, we end our turn. We need a way to get back artifacts. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, I can't believe they top decked that. That's what I've been worried about basically this entire time. And I'm like, well... Okay, that's nice. Uh, we're going to play our bodyguard. I think we use it on Baird. Hmm. Maybe we use it on Keldon Raider since it can block a lot harder. Yeah. We'll attack for two. And play our Trapper. Why can't you just draw land like a normal person? Oh my god. <laughs> this isn't good. We used up our removal and now they've played... This is a huge problem. This is a small one. Oh god. Now even if they drew draw land, uh, they just get more, more out of it, basically. That is not good. We do have more removal in our deck, of course, but um, we don't have it. Let's have another Chronicler. Yeah, we haven't used both of them. Okay. See, I'm drawing lands. Why can't they do that? <laughs> now I don't really want them to, though. I wanted them to draw land instead of Tatio, but now a land basically just says gain one life. And by the way, get deeper into your deck. Okay, Mammoth Spider. That has put a stop to Easter Glider for good. I, I didn't attack with it last turn. That was a mistake. I mean. They're going to end up winning by two life at this point. Really? Your hand's empty. Why would you... Why? 
Okay. Um, making sure I'm not missing something on the board, and I'm not. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Get that blessed light. Got to use it on Tatiova, I think. And I will end my turn. <laughs> I'm really glad Baird exists right now. Because without Baird... Oh, that's good, too. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. So... I'm going to cast Sheevan Fire with the kicker to kill this. And I'm going to cast Blessed Light to kill the spider. And I'm going to attack for two. Ether, Ether Glider has easily done 20 damage in this game. Stupid life gain. Yeah, that thing is so sweet in a ramp deck that has, like, great uh, top-of-the-curve nonsense. Okay, another removal spell certainly doesn't hurt. Um, I think we just keep cracking it in the sky. Oh, they have Gideon's Reproach. <laughs> okay. Well, there goes our win condition. Now we can, we can find... There's other ways... We can, of course, get it back, among other things. End our turn. I mean, there's no reason for us to attack with our four threes into this board. It's just... It's an, it would be a nightmare if we did. I mean, maybe we should? No, I don't think so. Ooh, hello. Cost eight kicked. No, you only cost seven, so I can actually replay the glider. Nice. Come back to me, glider. Could be back to the candle, but I think the glider's better. Um, we also get to tap something, but I'm not sure that makes a significant difference here. We'll tap the Danitha. I mean, yeah, I mean, they could just double block with their 2 2 tokens. It's just not worth attacking anything that isn't Easter Glider. Right, so Glider attack. We're going to hold on to this land to make it look like we have more going on, which is, I'm 99% sure is what they're doing. Oh no, they have another, do they have another freaking kill spell? <laughs> we both had to cast Blessed Light on very cheap cards that doesn't feel great to do it on. Okay. We can kill that with our reproach. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Tap the flyer, but we can't attack this turn anyway. End our turn. So he'll be milled first, and he'll deck himself first at this point. So that's, I mean, uh, timeout first. So if things have to go that way, that's okay with me. Yeah, Baird is not nearly as useful now when they have a million mana. I even found a way to make a red-white deck grindy, so... Ooh, that is... That's not so good. Hmm. It's really not good. Okay, that does help. Because we can threaten them. Oh, we can actually tap this down now and attack for two, dropping them to six. Just need to keep doing that.
They can hit me for three at a time, but I'm not super concerned if they do. They choose not to, and we can't do anything, so we'll end our turn. Oh, hello. I forgot we even had this in our deck. It's a weird card to not have drawn at all. So now all we need is a historic permanent and we can tap this down and swing for lethal. We do have some left in our deck. Aw, oh, crap. <laughs> no! They're gonna get back Tatiova. Although at this stage of the game, it might not matter. Because they're gonna run out of time or deck themselves before it can help them. That is what they got back, though. Silly, silly board state. Okay. End our turn. 11, 12, 13. So there's... And there's one in our graveyard, so we have a few lands left. One land left, maybe? I'm glad we exiled the spider, at least. They're under a minute. What did they get? I'm sure I'm about to find out. Uh, Avon Sentry is what they got. They are out of cards in their library. So unless they can kill me here with zero cards in their hand, <laughs> I think they lose. Yeah. All right. Where are we going to draw a historic permanent? No. Yeah, eventually. So even if that had decked themselves, I think we would have won that one. All right. On to our third match. See if we can get another trophy. All right. Going into the final match, trying to get another trophy. And this is a reasonable hand. We'll keep it. I've never had it. Like, I think I said it already. Uh, I, I'm not recording this the same day I recorded the other two matches. So I don't remember if I said it, but I think I did. All of our hands have been, like, fine. <laughs> Which is nice. It's nice not having to mulligan at all. But none of them have been like, oh, look at this. Maybe it's just the way my deck is. I don't know. It's worked out so far, though. Yeah, I don't think we want to play the Chronicler, especially when we already have our approach in our hand. And a 1-3 right now isn't going to do a whole lot. Um, you know, if they played some scare, like a, the White Knight here, I would play it probably, because it can block it forever. That one it can't. It can trade with it. That is kind of worth thinking about, I think. Um, I think I'm just going to play the Overseer, though, and attack. Let's get racing. I wonder what I would discard if I get the mana for Kelden Raider. Might just be the Chronicler. Okay, yeah, they just want to trade. Cool. We're perfectly happy with the trade. I mean, our deck is built for the long haul. Our opponents may be too. Um, though you don't usually play two mana three ones in decks that are built for the long haul. But, you know, it does trade up, I guess. Okay, so I could play Get to Chronicler here. Ooh. <laughs> We're just going to have to play Gideon's Reproach on that. Um, got our land, but I don't think... Hmm, is it? Maybe I just want to take three once. Do I? Maybe. They may have a way to protect it. I mean, that is definitely uh, what you want to do. When you are trying to go on with the aura strategy, the trick that makes it indestructible, uh, for example. But, yeah, I think we still just leave up Gideon's Reproach. We can play the Reproach and then play um, the Raider on our turn, probably, is what's going to happen. So let's give this a shot here, see, see if it works. If it does, we're going to be pretty happy. I mean, it's a two-for-one. If they have the trick to make it indestructible, that's going to be bad. <laughs> but... Won't be the end of the world just yet. <clears throat> we'll be headed that way, though. We'll be headed for the end. Um, good. Let me just get that two for one. Never even took a hit from it. OK, 
Okay, now there's one of those in play, though. Freaking Pegasus Courser. Okay, uh... I think I play the Raider. The question is, do I discard this land when a sixth land means... I can play either of these fairly good cards. Or this, actually. Uh, I think maybe we don't discard. I don't think we do, no. Because, yeah, if we get a six land, we can play everything in our hand and really get rolling, I think. I hope. So, yeah, I think that's the right choice. It's not like uh, looting, where you always get to draw the card first. Uh, so with rummaging, you don't always want to do it. With looting, you basically do almost want always want to do it. Some argue that you 100% of the time want to do it because of the knowledge it gives you about your deck, but I don't know about that. Um, okay, so we're going to attack with our 4-3. Get in there. Kapow. And I think maybe I just play the Chronicler here. Ah, maybe not. Maybe I just play the big guy and just say, let's go to the races. Yeah, let's just play the big guy. Pow. If they play another creature here, I probably play Haphazard Bombardment. Uh, if they don't, I probably play the Chronicler. I think that's the plan. I think that's the plan. Um, yeah. so awesome that this card is good. I'm pretty excited to do the uh, Stuff I Got Wrong video because, oh, great. Sup, Teferi. We can put a, a bombardment counter on it at least, but, uh, yeah. No attacks? You're going to double block this? Oh, you're afraid of losing Teferi, I see. Um, interesting. Okay, well. Let us attack Teferi. Get them to block in a way they probably don't really want to. Yeah, I mean, I'm cool with the double block. So the problem is, now I don't really want to play Bombardment, but it's tempting. Um, okay, so I'm going to kick the Chronicler and get back Gideon's Reproach. this land and in my turn good old Teferi okay don't want to land don't give me a land please if I'd known I was going to draw all the lands, I would have discarded one to kill the Raider. Okay. Well, I think we have to do this now, because we're going to lose the game if we don't. And it kind of sucks to have to do it, but, you know, it's whatever. So, we're going to hit Teferi. I wish I was up to four, because I'd rather have a 50% chance of blowing up Teferi. Uh, or Cold Water Snapper. Um... So, mana base. I guess I'm going to go after two planes. My opponent knows I have Gideon's Reproach, or at least should know. Die, Teferi. Okay, well, I don't hate killing the Snapper there. Would have rather killed Teferi, but what are you going to do? I haven't gotten to draft Teferi or Karn yet. Seems like a good time. <laughs> Short sword. Well, that's good news, I think. We need another creature to pressure to ferry in case we can't kill him with our haphazard bombardment, which there's every chance that we can't. There's our Pardic Wanderer that Teferi buried. I think we still attack Teferi here because, yeah, we'll attack Teferi. If we don't kill Teferi, making sure its loyalty stays relatively low so that, like, Pardic Wanderer can trample over our opponent, especially with the help of Gideon's Reproach. Seems pretty good. They could have a counterspell here. Looks like they do. 
syncopate for a million. Yeah. And we can't even get him back later with our elephant. Okay. Please kill the fairy. 33%. Yes. <laughs> All right. That worked out. Whew. Feels good. We do need to draw like something to threaten our opponent though. Especially since they're playing that. Luckily, you know, we can kill it with the reproach, so it's not although he can put the short sword on it first, can't he? Yes, that's not fun. Okay. Well, Sanctum Spirit it is. That makes it harder for our opponent to race us at least. Get rid of a planes. So that worked out about as well as we could hope. We killed, I mean, maybe killing Teferi before the turtle would have been better, but we killed the turtle and Teferi, and there wasn't a guarantee we'd do that. Yeah, so they put the sword there. Which means we take five to the face. Oh, come on. That... Why you gotta be like that? Okay, so our Chronicler's gonna attack. We're gonna hold on to this land. We have a little mystery. Our opponent knows we have the reproach, so they don't know what this is, though. Go to nine. Stupid Academy Drake with short sword. Ooh, <laughs> that might be what we have to do. Won't be pretty if it is, but gotta do what we gotta do, you know? Double Gideon's approach. At least I got one of them back. So it's not quite a two for one, you know? Yeah, again, hold on to this land. Make our opponent wonder. Ooh, come on, you don't need to. <laughs> Man, the equipment is just owning me right now. Yeah, so if we get into approach twice, we're only doing four now. <laughs> so we can't, so we might just be dead now. Uh, yeah, we're dead. All right. Well, yeah, Teferi definitely did us in there indirectly. Um, still don't have a good sideboard. But Fiery Intervention is actually in my deck now. I made sure to change that. So, this does get a little better against the Icy thingamajig, the Frozen frozen Enchantment thing. Um, but, I mean, we only have three creatures who can be bounced with it, so. Oh, five, actually. I don't think that's enough. Um... All right, we would like to play first. And I think this is a pretty good hand. Early Reproach, we have Teshar, which is nice. Uh, although right now she's not really doing anything too crazy, but. Yeah. Okay, our friend Overseer is here. Oh, we're gonna get to crack in for three. Having a way to blow up equipment would be really nice, but we don't. Um, yeah, so. Killed an Overseer. This is a nice one too, because we can get it back later with Teshar, so we're gonna be pretty willing to attack recklessly with it, and then, um, get it back later. And the fact that it has haste when it comes back isn't anything to sneeze at either. I mean, that can really, I mean, it always has haste, but that's my point. Uh, yeah, having haste is pretty strong on a, on, when you reanimate a creature. Academy Drake, okay. I definitely just attack into this thing. Here, I think we do discard um, something. So we'll attack for three. Probably just take it, yeah. So, do we play Teshar first? Hmm. I don't think so. 
I think I want to play the Raider. It puts more pressure on their life, basically, by a lot. And it's going to rummage for us because we're going to pitch a mountain here. Yep, drew another land anyway, which is fine. So if they suit this up, they can attack me for four, but it's not that's not exactly gonna gonna win a race or anything at this point. And I mean they have to pay three to equip it, so if they do that. The door is definitely open for us to just wreck our opponent. Um, he could equip it just so that it can trade with my raider, which is probably better than equipping it and attacking me. Oh god, shield of the realm. <laughs> so annoying. I haven't seen people play it a whole lot, but it's been good against, you know, of course... These, these are the only removal spells we have that do damage. I guess we also have the uh, the other one, whatever it's called. Okay, so... Yeah, I mean, Gideon's Reproach will still kill it. So I think I just attack. I think it's... Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Just attack and Reproach it um, when they block. So that'll do two damage. We get in for four, drop them to ten. All right, that is good news. There's a good chance they have syncopate or something, but... Uh... We can play around it if we want to. They made their own reproach to Blessed Light, okay. Well, they're tapped out now, so I think we just slam the big guy here instead of getting trying to get cute and playing Teshar here. Um, Teshar does have evasion, but... And ideally, like, I would play it after playing Teshar because then I can get a creature back, but playing a huge creature here is pretty effective. Okay, obnoxious, um, especially when you do that. Uh, so the good news with Trample is I, hmm, yeah, I guess I still have to, yeah, no. I still think I attack and leave all my mana up because that may scare him into not attacking, uh, not blocking, but I think, I think he'll block. We have to pay one. Maybe attacking with both is better. Ooh, they're going to go to two. So they were too scared to block. So I think we play our flyer here just because she provides lethal next turn all on her own. Yeah. Is Teshar even a girl? I keep assuming. I don't know. Gender. So we've got lethal in the air. So they have to have a kill spell for Teshar or a flyer. And we also just have lethal because we've gone wide enough to have lethal. Okay, that scares me a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's why it scares me. I think they're still dead, though. Unless they also have Gideon's Reproach, right? I mean, they take at least two here. Yeah, we'll take three. Okay, so I, th I say we go for it. Um, this is something that's going to kill us. Rather quickly. If they have approach, we still have things we can do, so. Nope, they don't. All right. So, will we get the trophy? Can I get a trophy without bad audio? 
We're about to find out. <laughs> uh, yeah, still don't have anything to put in, so. <laughs> I mean, I guess Healing Grace would be good against some people. That's like our best sideboard card, but it's not good here. Okay, so this one only has two lands. But I'm on the draw, and if I draw lands, it's actually a pretty strong hand. So I think I keep it. I mean, having a six and a five isn't exactly what I want to be doing, but, you know. I think I can hit land number three in time. Hey, and I, if I don't, I have Getu Chronicler to try to block for me. <laughs> Which, again, it does block that knight really well. God, Shield of the Realm again. Nonsense. Okay. Yeah, I don't think we play the Chronicler. I think what we do is play the Trapper first. We might play Sanctum Spirit. We have two ways of making it indestructible in our hand, which is pretty nice. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not good. Especially with Shield of the Realm. At least it doesn't have Vigilance. So yeah, we'll play our Trapper here. And I think we just play our glider, tap this, maybe swing for five, maybe. Depends depends what our opponent has. If they attack with this, I'd probably tap their other blocker. Oh my god. <laughs> That's not good. I can tell you that. Um, now it has vigilance. Yay. Okay. Um, is it better to play Sanctum Spirit? Um, I don't think so. I think I'm still going to play the glider here. Tap that down. We really need to get to mana for the bombardment because at least we can blow up. Even if we can't blow it up, we can blow up some of the stuff attached to it. And that will make a big difference. So we'll get in for three. I mean, there's no reason not to do it because we can't block him anyway. So, I mean, yeah, this is a race we lose, but we should try to keep their life at a fairly manageable level if we can help it and granted easter glider is pretty terrible here because of vigilance okay we're getting close to the mana that we want um for haphazard bombardment i think we play sanctum spirit here playing a big blocker on the ground isn't going to help i think this will help a little more We need that sixth mana. This is when we really want to draw a land because if we go target shield, target on Sarah's wings, target knight of grace, target Pegasus courser, except it's not targeting actually. That'll be pretty good though is my point. Give it double flying. It can only be blocked by two flying creatures. Flying, flying menace. Don't leave mana up please because then I'm going to be Worried you're gonna sink and pay me. I'm still worried. Oh, no. Yeah, tap out. Give me that land, please. Yes. <laughs> okay, so definitely play bombardment here. I do have to decide what we really want to target. Um, I think we want to target Knight of Grace. Oh yeah, I can't target this, so I just have to hope. Yeah. So and Shield of the Realm. I think that's reasonable. And, uh, yeah, we'll end our turn. We're pretty close to just being dead. Three, four, five, six. So we better kill one of the creatures here. Oh, that was really good. Thank you. <laughs> We've been lucky with Haphazard Bombardment in this draft. I'm not going to lie. Anything would have felt good there, but hitting the Knight of Grace on the first trigger is wonderful. So, yeah. We can actually, oh no, we can't. Easter Glider's pretty bad against Pegasus Courser. They can attack us though for three still. It's kind of a problem. I think I would have put it on the Courser because I know I have Gideon's Reproach and Gideon's Reproach will still kill this. I wouldn't be able to kill the Courser. Wish I could gain life. Somebody. Ruined mine by making it so I can't. Okay, 
Okay, they're emptying their hand to play freaking Teferi. <laughs> Not just Teferi, but freaking Teferi. Man, they took away my haphazard bombardment. Um, okay. Well, um... Goodbye, Teferi. Been real, so I'll attack Teferi with that. Attack my opponent with that. We are about to take three more. It would be awesome if there was enough time in this game for me to get Haphazard Bombardment back, but I don't think there's going to be enough time. But... Sure, yeah, we had to have something. Big whoop. Okay. We need one of our removal spells for that courser, basically. Or it's going to kill us. Oh, good. Okay. Um, they might still kill us, but it is less likely that they just can kill us here. Um, so we're gonna attack with everything. Drops into 13 and we play our elephant. Five, eight, eleven, fourteen. So if they continue to be aggressive here, we have a shot. Um, what do I most need to kill? Well, I have to kill one of the two power creatures, or I'm dead. So, not. Uh, and I think it's. Hmm, which one is it better to kill? I think probably the Drake. If we go to one here. We can get it back, but we can't get it back and cast it. We don't quite have that much mana. Oh. <laughs> we actually have a shot at winning this, depending on what's in their hand, anyway. Um, alright, well. Five, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we have exactly 13 damage, so they have to... If they have anything, we lose, but if they don't have anything, we just sort of stole a win here thanks to that Gideon's approach. Wow. <laughs> Didn't feel like we were going to win that game, but, you know, drawing that reproach and getting just enough damage on the table with our elephant was big. They stayed really aggressive, and that helped us go 3-0 in this one. So, 3-0 without bad audio. So, see if we can do that again.